Hi, I'm John Rentoul, the Independence Chief Political Commentator. Now, after Keir Starmer's visit to Paris to see President Macron, the Independent asked readers uh, for their questions about what this means and what the Franco-German proposals for a four-tier Europe, which were announced at the same time, what they might mean uh, for Britain's future in Europe, uh, particularly under a Labour government. So let's start with a simple question from one reader. What are these plans? In essence, the plan, which is an informal plan put forward by a group of uh, uh, French and German academics, but we think with the approval of the French and uh, German governments, and that's important because they determine a lot of the EU's policy. Uh, the plan is to create a four-tier structure for Europe. Uh, in the outer tier would be uh, where Britain is already, which is the uh, European political community, which is one of uh, President Macron's recent ideas. Then the next tier would be countries like Norway and Switzerland, uh, which would be in the single market. Uh, and there's a possibility that Britain might be part of that. Then there's plain uh, EU membership, and then there would be an inner core of countries that want to integrate further uh, and give up the veto uh, and decide everything by majority voting. Selden wants to know, isn't this a framework to streamline entry-exit procedures and allow nations to tailor their relationship based on shorter-term uh, issues than at present? And do I think that it might have a negative impact on EU stability uh, by setting up power blocks uh, outside the core nations? Now, that is a very good question because I was surprised about this idea of an inner core uh, rushing ahead to further integration because that would... Uh, as Selden says, divide uh, existing EU members. Um, you know, we've already seen that Britain was very reluctant when we were a member to be put in a second tier, but we were already outside uh, the Euro uh, and outside that passport-free Schengen zone. But I would have thought, I'd be surprised if, the, if EU members who were destined for that second tier would tolerate a higher core going ahead of them. Meg asks, will there be a people's vote on it? Now that's a sensitive subject, especially for Keir Starmer, because he advocated a second referendum on Brexit uh, and it, it didn't end well for, for the Labour Party uh, in the 2019 election. So Keir Starmer is going to steer well clear of any suggestion of a further referendum. And he's also going to rule out, as he has done, uh, anything that involves Britain uh, re-entering the single market. But I do think that it does open up a bit of space for Keir Starmer to, uh, to make the argument that he could renegotiate some kind of uh, better trading terms with the EU because it suggests that the EU is open to some quite radical ideas. Paul asks, regarding the UK and Brexit in particular, what are the actual best interests of the EU? Now that does raise an interesting question of what the EU is prepared to give uh, the UK. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people suggest that the EU shouldn't be interested in the UK. We've left um, and, you know, if we started a, a long and tortuous negotiation over the terms of our trading, uh, what would the EU get out of it? I mean, they're perfectly happy with us uh, being out. I'm not sure that's strictly true. Emmanuel Macron, I don't think, is just being polite. Um, I think he wants good relations with Britain, especially if there is a Labour government. I think he's, uh, he's engaging in a bit of canny politics there. Um, but I think the EU does want to have uh, a good relationship with, with Britain, even if individual EU leaders might be pretty wary of re-engaging with uh, one of their most troublesome uh, former members. Uh, but eventually, I think uh, the EU would want to see Britain rejoin, and I think they would do the minimum possible to make that happen. OK, finally, uh, one reader says, now that the British can no longer deny the fiasco that is Brexit, it's no surprise that Britain wants to cosy up to the EU, but what would each of the 27 EU member states and, and you know, 10 prospective new states have to gain from granting a troublesome former member any privileges? when a clean break is working so well. Well, that is, um, that is the, the, the point I was just referring to. Uh, but I think that uh, the EU does want 
to maintain good relations with Britain, even if we have been possibly a thorn in their side for such a long time. I mean, we are still a large uh, market and an important neighbour, uh, and a Labour government is a different proposition. If there is a Labour victory at the next election, I think uh, things will change. Uh, Keir Starmer will be able to do things that Rishi Sunak can't do, although Rishi Sunak has actually done some rather constructive things with the EU. Uh, and I think um, the space would then open up for a, a longer term debate. I don't think anything's going to happen uh, in the next few years, but who knows about uh, the longer term beyond that. Thank you very much for watching You Ask the Questions. You can watch more episodes on Independent TV.